The session of the Mississippi House and Mississippi Senate is now called to order. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the House and the Senate, distinguished guests, uh, guests, honored visitors, citizens of the state of Mississippi, welcome to your capital. It is truly an historic event. Uh, you may be seated, please. First, I'd like to take a personal privilege to introduce my wife, Lynn Hoseman, who is here with me today. We're here today uh, to recognize the orderly transition of government as instructed by the electorate. This transition comes at a time when our state is financially healthy, our citizens are reading and graduating from high school in record numbers, and our citizens have work. This has occurred by the actions of our citizens, Lieutenant Governor Reeves, Speaker Gunn, the legislature, and the hardworking employees and educators of the state of Mississippi. However, for every organization to achieve success, it must have an effective leader with foresight and vision and a willingness to work. Each of us in political office wants to leave our state in a little bit better condition than we found it. This man has exceeded every one of those goals. Please rise and recognize Governor Phil Bryant and his wife, Deborah, for all of their hard work for the citizens. And now, as we begin our program, I'd like to introduce Superintendent David Tipton of the United Pentecostal Church. Please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the national anthem. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, on this historic day, we gather to celebrate the peaceful transfer of leadership from one public servant to the next. We thank you that Mississippi has been the recipient of many of heaven's choicest blessings for the past eight years. On this special occasion, we pray that you will bless our new governor, Tate Reeves, and that he will continue to bring the power of prayer to bear on all the challenges he confronts and as he feels the great duties of his new office. Thank you for the honor, God, to stand before you and lead this distinguished group in prayer. Governor Rees have served the people of this state so faithfully for the past eight years as Lieutenant Governor. Now he embarks on the journey of his new calling. In this moment, we pause to thank you that we live in a state that is blessed with leaders who recognize the need for prayer and strong faith. Governor Reeves is no exception. He has been a friend to me and to people of faith across this state. He's always stood strong in support of religious freedom and for that, we can all be thankful. 
Today, we can give him and Ely a covering of prayer. We can lift them up to a God who is able to do above and beyond what we can ask or even think. We know without a doubt that you desire to bless the people of Mississippi. You have good intentions toward all who humble themselves before you. Lord, we recognize our frailties and we ask that you would strengthen us and our new governor with your spirit to do the work that you have called him to do for all Mississippi. The work of government calls for human judgment and compromise. From this moment forward, I pray you would grant him strength that is equal to the weight of this office and the wisdom to lead all Mississippi forward. In the words of Solomon, give him an understanding heart to judge your people, bless his family, as they assist him in bearing the weight of this great office. I pray he will never be satisfied with good when greatness is within reach. I pray that he will strive always to inspire the next generation to live with integrity. When he faces difficulties and challenges, I pray that you will give him the inspiration of your spirit and help him to inspire us. And in the words of Sir Francis Drake, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider seas where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push into the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. Lord, we take comfort in the fact that you will never give us more than we can bear. You are trusting him with this position of leadership, and I know you will continue to encourage him with the knowledge that we are praying for him and standing with him. Go with him today and every day. Give him strength when he feels weak, and peace when he's troubled, and confidence when he makes a decision. For all Mississippi, I pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. 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 Mississippi National Guard now will present the colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to the Mississippi National Guard, Color Guard. Thank you. You may be seated. It is my privilege and honor to recognize a host of dignitaries that are here today. So uh, I want to proceed with doing that. I want you to applaud as you feel led. The first person I want to start with is my wife, Lisa Gunn. We have with us on the stage Senate President Pro Tem Dean Kirby. <laughs> Speaker Pro Tem Jason White and his wife JoLynn. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman, his wife Lynn. Agriculture Commissioner Andy Gibson, his wife Leslie. <laughs> Secretary of State Michael Watson and his wife Lauren. <laughs> Insurance Commissioner Mike Cheney and his wife Mary. <laughs> Auditor Shad White and his wife Rena. Attorney General Lynn Fitch. <laughs> Treasurer David McRae and his wife Katie. <laughs> Former Governor Phil Bryant and his wife Deborah. <laughs> Former Governor Haley Barber and his wife Marcia. Former Lieutenant Governor, Eddie Briggs, his wife, Becky. And we have the wife of Congressman Michael Guest here today, Haley Guest. Now I would like to proceed with the introduction of our Supreme Court. I would ask that you would hold your applause until each of them has been introduced. You've already met Chief Justice Mike Randolph. He will come. Uh, again shortly. Presiding Justice James Kitchens, Presiding Justice Leslie King, Presiding Justice Josiah Coleman, uh, Justice James Maxwell, Justice Dawn Beam, Justice Robert Chamberlain, Justice David Ishi, and Justice Kenny Griffiths. Please give them a round of applause. We'd now like to introduce our Court of Appeals and would ask that you hold your applause until all have been introduced. Chief Judge Jonna Barnes, Presiding Judge Virginia Carlton, Presiding Judge Jack Wilson, Judge Jim Greenlee, Justice Latrice Westbrooks, Judge Sean Tyndall, Judge Deborah McDonnell, Judge Anthony Lawrence, Judge David McCarty, Judge Corey Wilson. Please give them a round of applause. We have a variety of district-wide office holders here today. I would ask that you hold your applause until they have been introduced. We have Central District Highway Commissioner Willie Simmons. Central uh, Northern District Commissioner Johnny Caldwell and Southern Transportation Commissioner Tom King. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> We're also privileged to have our Public Service Commissioners here. Brandon Presley from the North, Brent Bailey from Central, and Dane Maxwell from the South. Please give them a round of applause. 
And I would like to acknowledge my colleagues in the legislature here today. So if you are a member of the House or Senate, would you please stand? At this time, it is my privilege to invite to the podium former Congressman Greg Harper, who will read a passage of scripture for us. Please give Congressman Harper a round of applause. Second Chronicles 714, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Thank you, Congressman Harper. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege now to bring to the podium a man of great integrity who has served this state very faithfully to me, uh, for many years. He will administer the oath to Governor Reeves. Please welcome to the podium Chief Justice of the Mississippi Supreme Court, Mike Randolph. Jonathan Tate Reeves. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States. That I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Mississippi. And the Constitution of the State of Mississippi. <coughs> and obey the laws thereof. And obey the laws thereof. That I am not disqualified. That I am not disqualified. From holding the office of governor. From holding the office of governor. Of the state of Mississippi. Of the state of Mississippi. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office. The duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice, Governor Bryant, Governor Barber. Thank you for being here. Lieutenant Governor Hoseman, Speaker Gunn, President Pro Tem Kirby, Speaker Pro Tem White, members of the Mississippi Legislature, friends, family, and my fellow Mississippians, it is my greatest honor to stand before you today and take this sacred oath. I was just 29 years old when I first took an oath in this capital to serve the people of this great state. The last sentence of that oath hit me hard on that day and it drives me still today. So help me God. The call to action of the oath of office is not a commitment to be perfect. It is a commitment to seek the guidance of the Almighty God to compensate for our human frailty. Our forebears in Mississippi governance were not perfect, but they perfectly scripted this oath. And as your governor, you have my commitment to seek God's guidance and God's will in all that I do. We began this celebration on Sunday in the church where Ely and I have worshiped since we were students in college. And to start this celebration, 
We prayed not that we would be perfect, but that we would be faithful. I'd like to take a few moments today to talk about the road ahead of us and about what is behind us. 2019 was a tough campaign year. Some would say it was a full contact campaign, but that campaign is over. Campaigns by necessity highlight differences. Governing is about coming together. Here is my promise. This will be an administration for all Mississippi. For all Mississippi. Now that is our theme here today, and that will be our motto. That means our two priorities will be defending the loving culture that underpins our quality of life and growing the economy that lifts all of our families. A culture of love and kinship has knitted Mississippi families together and tied them to each other for ages. It is what makes us special in a fast-paced and transient world. I will defend that culture against the erosion that frays societies, and I will work to make sure our state government's functions reflect the love we have for each other. That will mean taking care of foster kids. That will mean getting special needs kids the special help they need. And yes, it will mean cleaning up corrections to provide for the safety of our citizens and the human dignity of all within the system. It will mean making sure state government is not causing more problems than it solves. And of course, the very best way to solve problems for families is to get them great jobs. A growing, vibrant economy solves more problems than any government giveaway ever could. A government program helps for a month, but a good paying career helps a family for generations. It is my mission to spend every single day creating a climate where good careers are plentiful with every Mississippian prepared to pursue them. To do this, we must raise our eyeline and our expectations. It must not be our ambition to simply keep up with Arkansas or Alabama. It must be our goal to compete with the for the very best jobs in all the world. We can do it. It starts with workforce training. I am committed to a history-making increase in workforce training in our state, a skills-based system that will be the envy of the nation. I am committed to elevating our public schools. That means a pay raise for every teacher and a new mission to give us more national board certified teachers per capita than any state in the nation. Now, you will note that I did not say more than anyone in the Mid-South. I did not say number one in the Southeast. I said number one in the nation. It is a goal we can achieve and one worth achieving. We have done it before and we can do it again. Applause 
while we rebuild the way we train our workforce from kindergarten beyond high school, we will travel the world to find the job creators who want to be our partners. We will comb our state to find the companies that want to grow. We will lower barriers to innovation. We will do everything in our power to make sure this is the easiest place in America to start and to grow a business. Now, you have heard governors talk about opportunity as long as we have had governors. But I want you to know that for me, it is not just a matter of politics. It is not just a matter of policies. It's personal. My dad is joining me in this chamber today, and that is more than fitting. I would never have made it into any chamber without him or my mom and my brother. My dad grew up as one of 11 kids in a two-room house in Bogachitta, Mississippi. If you'd looked at my dad's circumstances, you never would have guessed what he would have accomplished. But then he started working on air conditioners. He worked hard and grew and built and grinded until he was one of the most respected people in his field in the entire state of Mississippi. His skills and his character changed his life, and that changed mine. It must be the mission of our government to open the doors of generational opportunity to more people in our state, north and south, man and woman, black and white. When Ely and I graduated from Millsaps, we both had opportunities to work in other states. Now, I think we can all agree people tend to like her better, so she probably had more opportunities than I did. <laughs> we were way too young to be wise, but we did make one wise decision that has shaped our lives ever since. Together, as a young couple, we decided to stand our ground in Mississippi. We decided... <laughs> we decided we would get married. We decided to pursue Mississippi careers. We decided we would raise Mississippi kids. And then we decided we would work together to make Mississippi better. I have never regretted it. And let's give a round of applause to Ely for all she's put up with. No surprise, she gets the largest applause of the day. <laughs> we have never regretted those decisions. And now, as governor, I will spare no effort to finish the job we started. As state treasurer, I rode shotgun on economic development missions with the greatest salesman Mississippi has ever known. As lieutenant governor, I got to walk shoulder to shoulder with a great listener who can relate to every person in Mississippi. Governor Barber and Governor Bryant, you have prepared me well, and I thank you. The greatest preparation you gave me was the understanding that no governor does this job alone. Leadership is an attitude of common purpose. It is the product of solidarity. It comes only 
when we all begin caring about each other more than ourselves. That kind of leadership requires a sense of mission, not just for our governor and not just for our legislature, but a sense of mission for all Mississippi. I am asking you today to join me in that mission. We must care about each other enough to overcome our differences. We must be faithful to each other enough to outlast our shortcomings. And we must be committed to each other enough to raise our expectations. When I took that first oath of office in 2003, I did not know how long my service would last. All I knew is that you, the people of Mississippi, had demonstrated a faith in me that I might never be able to meet. I have never underestimated your trust. I have never forgotten the oath to pursue service with the help of our God. And I will wake up every day working to bring us together to make our state be all it can be. Work that will be done by all of Mississippi, for all of Mississippi. Thank you for your support, and thank you for your prayers. God bless you, God bless your families, and may God bless the great state of Mississippi. Please remain standing as we close out this ceremony. I want to invite the Reverend Eddie Spencer to the stage uh, to give our benediction. Reverend Spencer is a pastor at Galloway where the governor attends. Please welcome him to the stage. you connect with someone as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just ask as we go forth that you will bless the governor in this state with the wisdom, the knowledge, and your grace and your mercy so that we will be the state that you have called us to be. We ask that your glory, Lord, that God will fill this place and that it will remove the spirit of division and give us that spirit of unity so that as we go forth, Lord our God, that in this state that you will be glorified and the state of Mississippi will be edified. And we plead your blood over our government and over this state. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Spencer. And now in closing, uh, first I want to congratulate Tate and his wife, Ely, as they begin a new chapter in Mississippi history. And we pray God's eternal blessings on you and your family. Um, as this joint assembly now comes to a close, I'd like to recognize Representative Becky Curry to dissolve the joint session. Representative Curry. Where Mr. President. I'd like to make a motion to dissolve this joint session of the Mississippi Legislature, and the House will adjourn until 2 p.m. tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard the motion that the joint session be uh, dissolved. All those in favor signify by, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The joint assembly is now dissolved. <laughs>